Hello and welcome to It's Only Electric. This is the iX3 2023 model, one week old, so a brand new car. This episode is about five good and five bad things about this car. And BMW lovers don't hate me because of this video. It's a great car, but there's still bad things and very good things. Let's start with the five bad things and then end with the good things to keep the mood up and to end this video in a good way. The first bad thing and sad thing is that this car is only offered in a rear wheel drive version. So there is no four wheel drive version of this car, which is very sad because this is an SUV. SUVs normally have four wheel drive. The car manages the rear wheel drive good, even in this kind of conditions, but still in the worst kind of weather, there's, it's always better with all wheel drive. So let's move on to the second bad thing. It is the lack of a frunk in the front. I mean, there's a big hood and this car is only driving on the rear wheels and the electric motor is actually in the back. So there's a lot of space under this hood, under this bonnet that's not utilized. So this is the cover and it's all empty under. There is probably around 100 liters of unutilized space. And I know that there is some third party product that actually makes this area to a franc. So the third thing, the third bad thing with this car is that BMW love buttons. I mean, it's good to a certain extent. You don't need to do it as Tesla to remove all the buttons, but BMW could easily remove half of the buttons and still have a good functionality and a convenient way of using the car. Let's look at all the buttons here. There's a lot of buttons for controlling like everything. I think this one is good, but then you also have the traditional stereo buttons with channel controls, for instance. Totally unnecessary, I think. The volume knob, yeah, okay, I understand that you probably need it, but there's three different ways of adjusting the volume. The first one is to adjust it with this one, a traditional knob that you turn. The second way is to use the buttons on the steering wheel. Those are great. And the third way is to use the gesture control so for instance, the gesture control are like, if I start the radio now, I can adjust the volume by using gestures, a great feature. So three different ways of adjusting the volume. So buttons everywhere. Also here in the middle console, in the central console, there is too many buttons. I, I mean, you don't need all these buttons here. And while talking about buttons, this one. Why do I still have to start and stop the car? You don't need to remove the button, they can keep it, but just save me from starting the car every time I enter it and want to drive away. I first need to press the brake, Press the start button, push this button on the side and pull it into drive mode. There is a lot of steps just to be able to drive away. I mean, it should be enough to push the brake pedal and move the gear selector or the mode selector into drive and then drive away. I mean, the start and stop button in this case, in this scenario is totally unnecessary. And the same thing is when you stop the car and want to exit the car, you put it in park. I mean, that should be enough. It's in park now. I should just be able to exit the car and leave. But I need to stop it manually too. So it's an unnecessary step. And that's more or less just software. And to the last annoying thing, a lack of sophistication when selecting the gear or the drive mode. So for instance, now it's in D in drive. And when I put it in P, 
and let go of the brake, there is some movement. Now have the car in park and put it in drive. Car rocks like there is a traditional gear shifter. Why does it work that way? I'm not sure, but it's a bit annoying. And I don't think it should be there on such a good car as this one. So that's enough of whining. Let's jump to the good things. There is a lot of good things with this car. Number one, the iDrive system. I really like the iDrive control wheel in combination with a touchscreen. The touchscreen is a bit far away to be able to do anything or everything conveniently. The touchscreen in combination with this one is very good. Because when I drive, I normally put my arm on this armrest and my hand is perfectly placed for controlling the screen with this wheel. So that's very nice. A nice combination to keep this one uh, together with the touchscreen. So let's go to the next great thing. It is actually the BMW's own gesture control. So for instance, when I want to raise the volume while driving, I just do like this, a clockwise rotation. It's very granular and fine. Lower the volume. A great thing. And I can change, for instance, to the next track by doing this. So when you get used to the gestures, they are very convenient and nice to use. Now it's time for the next good thing on the list. And that's actually in the back seat. And it is the backrest. Let's jump back and have a look. So the backrest is actually adjustable with the help of this button here. So you pull this one and it actually straightens up. So now it's like 80 degrees straight, not too comfy. So, but if you want some more comfort, it's easy to like sit on your seat, pull this and lean backwards. And then this part will fall back. Adaptive recuperation. Let's have a look in the menu. So this is in the car settings, drive mode, recuperation. You have four different modes, low, medium, high, and adaptive. I normally always use high, but the adaptive functionality is pretty clever. And especially for those that not are used to and don't want to care about the recuperation because the car handles that itself. And it's a smart function that changes the recuperation level depending on your drive style and also on the moment you are in. So for instance, when you travel on the highway and going down in a slope, then it starts to coast. That's a great function. Then you don't need to be as granular with your right foot on the accelerator. You can just sit back and relax and the car handles the right amount of, of recuperation. This function will probably help you to save some energy and to lower your consumption without even thinking about it. It takes some time to get used to though because it behaves different in different situations. So sometimes you have high recuperation whilst two minutes after in a different situation it's on low. So you just need to accept that it's constantly changing and adapting to the current situation you are in. So last but not least is actually in the trunk and it's this trunk cover. I mean, I really like trunk covers that are on a roll. So you just put it away and it gets out of your way. But the nice thing with this one is it actually can remove it and stow it away here. So you don't need it lying around in your trunk. It just disappears neatly and nicely. That should be the case in all cars. Perfect execution, very neat. 
good job. So that's my list of five good and five bad things. I mean, this is a great car. I think the biggest caveat is the lack of all wheel drive. It, it manages good on rear wheel drive though. I mean, BMW know how to build good rear wheel drive and electric rear wheel drive is a bit more sophisticated than combustion engine rear wheel drive because it's a lot more precise and granular and you have a lot more control. But still, four wheel drive would be a good thing on this car. The rest of the list is things that's more or less personal and things you may not agree on. So let's have a discussion in the comment section below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, always stay electric. Thank you for watching, speak to you soon.